Can you believe it's been over seven months since we've gotten this RV? No, I can't. It seems like just yesterday when we picked it up. We've been thinking about doing a six month review for a little while now and we just haven't put it together. So today we're going to do six things we like about this RV and six things we don't like about this RV to kind of put uh, a little bit of thought into the past six or seven months and how this rig has fit into our lifestyle. Sticking true to positive fashion, we are going to start with our likes. And our number one like is our kitchen. It's no secret that I love to cook. We eat the majority of our meals at home every single day. So a big functional kitchen was really important to us. And what I love about this kitchen is the gigantic sink. It's beautiful with the liner down below and the nice wide open counter space. This big counter space landing is very rare for this size of a travel trailer. And I love the fact that I can have my big beautiful chopping block and my air fryer sitting here while I still have plenty of space to prep and cook. For me and Aaron, the kitchen was key. Chris mentioned the large kitchen for the size of this travel trailer, which is actually our next like, and that is the overall size of it. It is not too big and it's not too small. It's about 26 feet, and it turned out to be a really good transition from our Sprinter van, which was about 22 feet, and uh, it kind of made us feel like we were getting a large upgrade in space, but we weren't jumping too big up in size right away. So somehow, just like the Sprinter van, Chris is now doing most of the driving after I started out doing the towing and driving with this, and I ended up spraining my ankle, Chris took over driving, and now it seems like she's driving the whole time. So you enjoy pulling this size travel trailer? It's a breeze to tow. It's really easy to drive, obviously going forward on the highway and even in the city. I don't get nervous at all because it's very manageable. The only times we have to be careful is like going into tight parking lots or places that might not have a turnaround to get out. So we need to like still pay attention more than we did in the van, but we've now been in multiple Costco parking lots, um, you know, Walmarts, things like that. And uh, it's very easy for this rig to get into most places. And for a trailer, I am very comfortable now backing it up and parking it in a back-end site. Um, I was Yeah, only, she mastered that pretty good. Yeah, I was only nervous on my very first attempt, which even that went smoothly. So even though overall with the truck and trailer together we're about 47 or 48 feet, we can still park this 26 foot travel trailer in a lot more sites than we could in the bigger ones. Not as many as a smaller rig like the Sprinter van, but uh, it's a good medium size that is working out pretty well for us so far. The next thing we really like about this travel trailer is the heavy duty-ness, the beefiness of it, and everything that comes along with that. So it has an almost 10,000 pound gross vehicle weight, and so for a 26 foot travel trailer, that allows you to have extra cargo carrying capacity. It allows us to have these really large tanks, which is a huge thing for us. So that's 70 gallons of fresh water, 40 gray and 40 black. So our two weeks of boondocking is pretty comfortable. Yes. One week is like super comfortable. You don't even have to worry about it. And then two weeks is a bit of conservative stretch for us, but at least it's doable and it's a lot more comfortable than in the Sprinter van. Way more comfortable. So this trailer has an eight inch I-beam frame on it, along with dual axles and the more ride three inch uh, suspension on it. So that's good for all the kind of back roads that we go on. So all of that allows us to have the high ground clearance as well as the half inch plywood roof and the five ace tongue and groove flooring. And so overall the build quality construction and uh, kind of the heavy dutiness of this trailer, if that's a word, that's definitely something we like about it. Our fourth favorite thing about this trailer is the overall layout. We have a rear entrance door that takes you into this entry with a huge wardrobe closet, which we use for a lot of bulk items. We have a bathroom, it's a dry bath. <laughs> it has a big shower with like a wonderful sunlight coming in from the top. 
and it still feels like a spa to me in there. Going into our big kitchen, which we've already covered, you know I love it and it really is nice and wide and open. In addition to all of the things that we've already talked about on this side, we also now have a nice big refrigerator with a freezer. I take full advantage of the freezer and I save a lot of money that way, shopping bulk as well. Going into our dinette area, this is where we office every single day. We spend a lot of time right here. We love the giant windows so we get a view Windows all around the trailer is another great thing. And especially we like our front cap window up in our headboard area. It's covered now. There's a insulated pillow in there that comes down and we actually have a fantastic view of the ocean as we speak. So we get lots of natural light in here. Having the bed that's a full walk around was really important to us and we love it. We were a little bit unsure about having the open studio style, but turns out we fall in love with it. It really does make the space feel large, especially for this being a small to medium sized trailer. We feel like if there were a partition here, it would just feel really cramped in here. So we love the fact that it's open. We love having a TV. We love this little standing bar where you could use it for various things. And it just feels great. Having the slide out is something that we love. Um, so as much as we love everything in here, we will say that having a puppy, it's the only time that we've missed having a sofa. I know there was a lot of comments from our viewers saying, oh, you're going to want a couch. And if it was just the two of us, I would still argue that and say, no, we don't need a couch. But now that we have a new addition to our family, it would be nice for that little guy to have somewhere to jump up and sit during the day. Next up, we have to talk about the insulation of this travel trailer. We absolutely love the two inch thick foam walls that it has, as well as like a thick uh, insulation in the curved kind of crown radius roof. The flooring has great insulation and the windows are even a dual pane thermal window, they call it. So all of that helps a ton in cold weather, which we don't like to do very much, as well as the hot weather, which we find ourselves in quite a bit. We have found ourselves in a lot of dry desert boondocking areas and just sitting out there with the sun baking on you, no shade uh, from trees or anything like that. And the insulation does great uh, up until I'd say the high 70s, 80s. It really is good. Even our air conditioner in Florida that we're in right now, uh, we don't even have to crank that down that much at all. It seems like we'll set it at around 75. And even though it's high 80s or even low 90s out here, uh, the air conditioner keeps up very, very well. And the very last thing that we're gonna talk about, cause we can't talk about the things we like without talking about this, and that is the electrical system. Now this isn't factory with our unit, but it's such a big part of our daily living that it's absolutely uh, crucial and we always have to mention it. I haven't done a review on this as well. We've had this for just over six months going on seven and this system has worked out great. We have 810 amp hours of Battleborn lithium batteries in here as well as 1200 watts of solar on the roof and our multi plus 3000 inverter which is just a awesome system in a 26 foot travel trailer and we can truly truly live off grid with comfort now moving on to our dislikes because not every rig is going to be perfect no so if we walk through here and we wave our magic wand these are the items we would fix. You actually waved a magic paintbrush at first. We've picked our final top coat color, which is called Gallery White. That was number one, was yeah. the brown interior. Yes, it was way too brown for our 2022 Outdoors RV. It was just too many shades of brown. Um, we liked some aspects of the wood, but we really needed it to be more neutral in here and not tan neutral. We needed some of that white. Uh, so Chris right away had to paint the entire RV walls mm -hmm. and that was quite a process. Yeah, I spent about, you know, in on everything, the walls, the backsplashes, the shopping, the planning, 100 hours easily. So 
While that all looks really good, there are still some remnants of darkness in here, and that is what we still dislike. While we enjoy some aspects, like Aaron said, there's others that we wish would still be like modern and crisp. And because this is a single room layout like we talked about, um, all of those colors and shades of brown just kind of like hit together and it's just it's too much as you just look around. So the white walls and the, the backsplashes that Chris did in the kitchen and in the bathroom uh, really did make it a lot brighter and whiter for us. And uh, it's unfortunate that we had to do that with a brand new RV, uh, but living in this full time, we definitely had to do it. I'd say it was worth it. Yeah. And here we are seven months later. Has the paint held up? Yeah. Did the process work? Yeah, actually everything's held up really, really well. Um, even the backsplash, I think I was most concerned about the backsplash because I didn't know how that would perform with all of the cooking I do and the high heat that's right next to it. Yeah. But that's been really, really great. Everything's still like brand new. Chris used Matt and Diana's from Adventurous Way, uh, their technique. They have a blog about it. They also have an outdoors RV. So we felt pretty comfortable using that exact plan and it worked out good. Yeah. So if you're looking for some tips, go to their blog and it is very detailed on exactly which products they used and the entire process that they followed. Okay, and speaking of all that brown wood, the next thing that we did not like about our RV is that the upper cabinets are mismatched wood from the lower cabinets. So these drawer fronts are a fake wood, and then anything that has a door is a real hard, solid wood. We did a video that covered a bunch of the things that were wrong with our RV when we first picked it up. And one of them was that these uh, fake wood cabinets were starting to chip and peel already. So I just wanted to let everybody know that the warranty process was pretty smooth and straightforward. And they are, ended up sending us new um, panels to get those replaced. Here we are at number three. Our third dislike is the bathroom layout. So we do love the overall layout of the trailer, but the bathroom itself is where we get a little nitpicky and it's just what you have to deal with when you're working with a 26 foot floor plan. So my biggest dislike in here is this wall. It's very tight, especially with this in here. So when I'm trying to get ready, I don't have the arm space. It's just really confined. So oftentimes I actually have to step out into the entryway and look at the mirror from here so that I can do things like straighten my hair or anything that requires my arms up. And I, I think if you look at how the mirror is placed, it's tight against the wall. So that's kind of like the biggest problem is that it's right against the wall. Maybe there was a little bit of room to, to move it out a little bit. Maybe not with the studs, not 100% sure, but uh, that's definitely an issue when you're trying to even do anything like put on sunscreen or Exactly. And then the other pet peeve about the bathroom, which is only because of the rear entrance, is you're always on display as long as you have this window open. So there's no privacy with the door open, which is a no brainer. That's kind of obvious, right? Like if you want privacy, shut the bathroom door. But in times where you want to shower and get out and like have the door open and you're not fully clothed, or pee with the door open, things like that. You can't do that if you are in a crowded campsite where there's people walking by, they have a straight line of vision right to you. So you just have to be careful on what you're putting on display. And in that same previous video, I mentioned that this shower leaked a little bit from the corners. Uh, that's not something we were gonna drive to Colorado to get them warrantied. So I spent actually a few weeks trying to get it fully dry and reseal it at the same time. So for this bathroom to dry when you actually use it every day it was very difficult to get it completely dry and i actually think that it was leaking on the insides of the track not just on the outside so it took a while to get it sealed but it is sealed and it hasn't leaked for many many months but uh definitely a little bit of a pain in the first first month or so that we had to deal with that Next dislike we're gonna talk about is the fact that we can't sit in our slide dinette table when it's slid in the in position. So when we're traveling uh, and we do Cracker Barrels or Walmarts or places where you just can't kick your slide out, um, it makes the trailer a lot smaller and a little bit difficult to have that overnight stop. 
And with little Louie, it's even more challenging just because there's so many nooks and crannies and it's hard to keep him out of uh, harm's way. So again, one thing that wasn't a big deal when we made the purchase and we knew that we wouldn't be able to use the slide and we were okay with that, it's a lot easier to have two adults, you know, confined in a small space but when you try to confine a little puppy it's just a little bit harder on everybody. Yeah so the only area we have is basically the bed to, you know to eat, sleep, and sit and do anything. So if we could use the table with the slide in it would just be a lot different experience. And every time we mention this we get a lot of people that say they've never heard of that or they've been using their slide in the in position and had no issues but the manufacturer, our manufacturer, definitely made it clear that you are not supposed to use this dinette on the in position, and that's because it's not fully supported. And when it's in the in position, it actually can move a little bit. So if you plop down, you're gonna put stress on things that can't handle it, things are gonna break, and then you're gonna end up having an inoperable slide, or even worse, it's gonna do more damage. And that's just the way it is with slides. If you don't have one, Consider yourself lucky, I guess, but when it's in the out position, man, it really does make a big difference. Yeah. Our fifth dislike is the amount of storage specifically for clothing. Now overall on this unit, there is a really good amount of storage in general, and we definitely have the capability to carry it weight wise. But once you get our batteries in this big storage unit, we have some drawers down here that have non-clothes items and then we have our bulk items and vacuum cleaner up in our big wardrobe up front. That leaves us with only these cabinets for our clothes. And they're pretty big, you know, don't get me wrong, we have a lot of clothes on board, but I think I have too many clothes for the space. You can see it, even with it being really well organized, it just gets kind of crammed in there. And then as a result, I find myself not even wearing a lot of what I have because I don't want to be digging it out. So clothing, I guess I'm getting a little spoiled. I have a lot, I want to wear it all, and I could even have a little bit more. But what makes it hard is being a full-time traveler, you need to be prepared for every situation. So that means carrying four seasons worth of clothing all year round. And I'm a freeze baby, so yes, I need my puffy coats, I need lots of hoodies, and then obviously you need your hot weather stuff too. So it just really adds up quickly and you need access to everything. And as a little bonus pet peeve, you were always talking about that door doesn't open all the way because of the balance on that window. I still hate this. So yeah, it doesn't open all the way. So something that's already irritating. Be because of the balance back here. Yeah, yeah. So Aaron's side of the bed, his door clears the balance, his opens all the way up to the wall. So he gets nice, easy access. And I'm just like wrestling with that side all the time. Yeah, and this is a emergency exit window. So it's short and fat. And so it's allowed so you can exit out safely as opposed to having the long, tall, skinny window over there, which I actually like that window better because you can see out while you're standing. Well, this one is just uh, a lower style window, but if somehow they could have two tall, skinnier windows and still have the safety factor figured out, that would be a best case scenario. Yeah, so I do feel a little guilty talking about something as privileged as clothing. Like, you know, it's a first world problem for sure. But again, this is the magic wand for our house. This is what we live in, and if I could change that, I certainly would. Our sixth and final dislike of this unit is in the kitchen, the electric and the way that it is set up and wired. So in the kitchen, we have four outlets that are AC outlets all on the same breaker. So that means even though we have power enough to put two high powered units running at the same time, that breaker just can't handle it. And that's a problem for me when I want to run my air fryer and my induction at the same time. And what I would ideally do is have my air fryer here and my induction here and be cooking simultaneously at the same time. When I try to do that, it blows, the breakers pop, and we have to shut down mission. We've tried to do some experimenting with running an extension cord into the bathroom, unfortunately, that's also the same breaker, so we can't do that. The only option would be to go up into this cabinet where the microwave is plugged in. That's on a separate breaker 
but it's really not safe to have cords dangling while I'm cooking, especially if we're doing like a recipe or filming something and or having people over, you know, like it's just not a, something that I want to get in the habit of having extension cords dangling in front of my face with this open. So I would love it if it was just set up a little bit differently so that I could have those two high powered units running at any given time. So if you look down here at the breaker box, this is a 30 amp coach as the total power. And then the rest of the breakers are split up between the air conditioner, uh, general purpose, general purpose, which is our outlets, water heater and microwave. And so these general purpose outlets, there is two of them, but it's split up kitchen and bathroom are on one 15 amp breaker and then the bedroom and the table slide are on another breaker. So those are just a few of the things that we really like and a few of the things that we really dislike and our way of kind of doing somewhat of a review uh, without going into a long form process of kind of going over everything. But overall, there's some things that we really like. Overall, there's some things that we really don't like. And uh, the past six, seven months have been uh, a great learning curve experience for us in a travel trailer coming from a Sprinter van. It's a totally different type of travel and we're really happy we made the change and got to experience some different travel styles, living styles. It was a big jump from the van, so life is, life is good. Yeah, we went from a 22 foot Sprinter van to a 26 foot travel trailer. And I remember in the process, I really didn't want to go much bigger than 25 feet. I just felt like it would be too big. And looking back in retrospect, like we have the bike rack on the back of this now. So technically we're towing like a 28 foot travel trailer. So, you know, everybody always says buy bigger, buy bigger, but we didn't want to go too big. But at the same time, are we starting to outgrow our little travel trailer with our new edition of Louis the puppy? I don't know. But those are our thoughts for today. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. And we'll catch you on the next video.